Oh, yes, very nice. I don't think you've met our photographic expert, Stella Palmer. This is our first model, Alice Lindstrom. Uh, how do you do? Hi. Uh, you've uh, had previous experience, Miss Lindstrom? Quite a bit. I assume that I shall be in charge of processing, developing and printing. Yes, that's right. Uh, will you require me to wear a similar uniform? Well, uh, yes. Oh, it's really most unusual, but, of course, very practical. Would give such a lot of freedom. Miss Palmer told you she's called the police. That's right, I did. I'll bet. Look, Evie, you can pull every gag in the book, but I'm not leaving here without Alice. Miss Murray's told you there's only Miss Lindstrom here. Well, let's have a look at her, then. I tell you, I'm... Well, me old mate, you really get around, don't you? Now, look, mate. We both do, Jackson. I'm Senior Detective Banner, Yarra Central. This is Detective Peters. Uh, someone from here rang D-24 about a disturbance. Uh, I did, Mr. Banner. Your name, thanks? Uh, Stella Palmer. Uh, Mr. Banner, I'm the manageress. We don't want to lay a complaint. This gentleman made some sort of mistake. He won't go. If you could just make sure he leaves the building, I'd be very grateful. Very well. If there's any more trouble, ring us immediately. Thanks very much. All right, Jackson. That was an assault. It'll be an arrest if you're not out of here in two seconds flat. What a dreadful man. Dreadful. Anyway, it's, it's all over now. Peach tree. Hold it steady. Oh, what's happened? Well, we're driving past this cop car, see, and who's in the back seat but your man? You mean arrested? How should I know? He was just sitting there. Look, I'd go with Melanie, you, except maybe... Melanie, you don't know. If they upset him, make him angry. Oh, I know, I know. And where's Tweed? Ah. Oh, he went on in the car to get the parcel to the general. I don't approve. Don't approve at all. Oh, there's no need for it. There's plenty of ways of earning a living without working for the general. Yeah, well, you try and tell Tweed that. It's too late for Tweed. Oh, yeah. Look, I'd get, better get back to the paint tubes. I've got about six million to do yet. This is lovely. Thank you. It is silk. It's beautiful. What about these edges? Mother, I... I really don't think Policewoman Stewart came all the way here just to look at the silks. Well, I, uh, I am moving into my own flat, sir. I'll begin in a minute. You better go and help Kenny with the paint tubes. Did Melanie ask you about Tweed? He's only been missing a couple of hours, Mother. I don't know what you're fussing about. Uh, how much does this cost? I get twenty dollars a roll. Your uh, your daughter's husband. Melanie's not my daughter. Everyone calls her mother. And um, this other one, Tweed, did you say? Well, surely that's not his real name. Neil Martin. Well, I think I've seen him. Today? Hmm. Doesn't he dress out in a sort of a Southern Army style? Oh, no. No, that's not him. That's the one they call the General. Mother, you do ask a lot of questions for someone interested in fabrics, don't you? Well, you, uh, you did seem worried about this uh, Tweed, and after all, we do get reports of accidents, that sort of thing. Well, you see, Tweed went out to see the General about an hour ago, and he hasn't come back yet. But why would he do it? Oh, he was so stoned he couldn't give a damn. But the delivery. He brass, that's what. I'm telling you that he... Uh, Kenny, this is police. Mama Stewart. I hope I'm not interrupting. I know. Well, um, I'd, uh... Yes? Did you want... Um, tell me about these. Oh. It's sort of an obsession with him. He can't tell you about it himself. He had a bullet through his larynx in Vietnam. They're tension lines. Look, these are the sketches. You find them in footpaths, clay, plaster. He's always searching for the perfect set. You see, each line is perfectly balanced by another, and he'd buy the next one, and so on. Can I keep some of these? Oh, sure. Take a hundred if you like. They've all been worked out. Perhaps you can sell some and get out of the police force. Tweed dropped you off in the next block. Yeah, when we saw Peachtree with the coppers. 
How was it then? Oh, high, but you know, I thought he could handle himself. Where would he go? Oh, man, anywhere. Then try everywhere. If you don't get to him before the general... Yeah, I know. You were supposed to be looking after him. Shh. Look, I'm very sorry, Kenny, but you're going to have to leave here. Well, you can't stay here anymore. I'll find him. Ah! Oh, no, stop! Oh, don't beg, Kenny, baby. Take it. Look, what do you want? I've been out looking for you. I believe you, Kenny, boy, and that doesn't help you one little bit. Look, we have taken you over the house. You can see he's not here. Ah, you're so right, Janus. So right. And I've got one for you, little Springer. I don't give a hoot in hell where Tweed is. All I want is the parcel. No, it's mine, Kenny, boy, so that's reasonable, Look, isn't it? Honest. I've been looking for Tweed. Look, he wouldn't browse. He's just off stand somewhere, that's all. On your feet. You're going to keep looking, and we're going to be around to make sure you find it. I don't care about Tweed. All I want is the parcel. Quick march. Four hours. That's how long you've got. Four hours. What about Jeannie Blacks? I tried there. OK, so I'll take Myra's, Frank's and David's. OK, I'll try Jan's place in the shed. What about down by the river, where they used to shoot up with Billy's crowd? I'll try. Up. Hello, Sandra. Is your mother in? She's in the kitchen. Oh. Sergeant Madden and that other chap. Oh, hello, Vic. Hello, Steve. Hello, Jim. Williams. Just in time for coffee. Please excuse a mess. I've just got in from work. Well, we're looking for Kathy Phyllis. We thought she might have been with you. No. No, she isn't. Is she in trouble? Looks like it. He sent her to a girl's home. Well, not necessarily. Oh, I don't want her to go to a home, Mrs. Williams. They might allow her to stay with a relative. She hasn't got any. What, none at all? No. Oh, I'm all she's got. Is Mrs. Williams here? Why? What's happened? Oh, don't worry. I'll think of something. There's a copper outside. Wants to see you. Down over there. How is she? She's pretty nervous. Oh, let me talk to her. Now, Mrs. Williams should try first. Now, if she doesn't respond, don't press it. We can sit it out if we have to. Cassie, will you come home with me? Home to my place? I would like you to stay with me and Sandra. Would you like that? Look, I do know what's been making you unhappy, and I want to help. You know you can trust me. I don't want to see him again. You won't have to. I promise. Would you like to come now, or do you want to stay here for a bit? If you like, you could just sit here for a while longer. No. I want to come with you. All right. Well, come on then, love. She 
never sticks up for me. She lets him treat me any way he likes. She doesn't have to stay with him. She's not even married to him. She doesn't care. If I don't do what he says, he locks me in my room, he bounces at me and he swears at me. He treats me like I'm bad. He says I do things with boys. He says horrible things, really horrible things. Just wish she'd take him away from me. She won't. She'll never leave him. She likes him better than she likes me. I hate her and I hate him. And if you send me back to Harry, I'll kill myself. <laughs> Senior, would you take Miss Phillips downstairs and have a wait? I want to talk to Mrs. Williams. <laughs> It's true what she says about Harry. Well, do you have any evidence that he beats her? Why don't you phone the doctor? He'll tell you, Dr. Thomas. Oh, I could reel off a whole list of things he's done to her. I remember once the headmistress phoned me and asked me why Kathy was going to school with no lunch. I spoke to Harry about it. He said he couldn't afford lunches. Well, he can afford to spend four or five evenings at the pub. He practically lives there. All right, Jean, I'll check it all out. Would you wait downstairs? I'll be as quick as I can. She's not going to Winborough. Why not? Oh, no, Vic, I won't hear of it. Well, it's hardly your decision. Well, Kathy needs a simply kindness and understanding. Yes, and she'll get them both at Winborough. Oh, well, in a manner of speaking, yes, but she really needs to feel that somebody cares about her. If she's in a romance centre, she'll be among strangers. She'll, she'll feel completely rejected again. She'll be with trained personnel who understand her problem. What Kathy wants is to come home with me. I'm trained to cope with the situation, and she trusts me, and that's very important. What's important is that Harry King hasn't a chance to upset her. Oh, look, I'm sorry, but you're just looking at things from a policeman's point oh, of view. Oh, listen, Jean, she's a potential suicide. My job is to ensure that she comes to no harm. Now, the only way to ensure that is to put her where she'll get the best of professional attention. Yes, and to release yourself from any responsibility. Look, the girl's in danger, and she must be protected. I'd have her back to normal in three days. You're a social worker. You're not a psychiatrist. Now, if you meddle in this, you could do more harm than good. Now, Vic... I don't want to take any unnecessary credit, but it's possible that I saved Kathy's life today. Yes, you might have. I'm grateful. But let me handle the rest of it my way. Yes, well, I'm afraid it's not quite that easy. You see, I did promise her she could come home with me. Now, if we break that promise, what's that going to do to her? Well, if it wasn't for Harry King... Oh, he won't give any more trouble. He's got no reason to. Hasn't he? No, that's okay, Bert. Tell him we'll be right down. That was Frank Sullivan, the JP, about Kathy's protection application. Good. Perhaps he'll see things my way. I wouldn't count on him. There. How's that? Comfortable? Yes, thank you. Now, don't you go getting up early in the morning. You have a good lie-in. You have to do nothing but rest. That's what you're here for. And don't worry. From now on, everything's going to be fine. Good night, Kathy. Good night, Mrs. Williams. Oh, if there's anything you need, just give me a call, okay? All right. Oh, hello, Belle. Hello, Mrs. Williams. I've got a things pattern ready. Good. How's Kathy? Oh, fine. She was still asleep when I left. I distinctly told you. I said she was not to be left alone in the house under any circumstances. I thought you had more sense. At least I thought you realised how serious it was. We're only gone 20 minutes. I don't care if it was 20 seconds. It was up to you to show some common sense to show a little consideration. Consideration? That's a laugh. Well, she's only here till Thursday. Surely you can put up with a little inconvenience till then. Is that so unreasonable? You said you wouldn't bring your work home anymore. You promised. Oh, love. Kathy's not work. She's just a sick girl in need of help. Anyone with a grain of feeling would do the same for her. You're always meddling in other people's lives. You never hear when I get home from school. You're out nearly every weekend helping other poor, lonely girls. Sandra, would you keep your voice down? Of course, let's not upset the guest. Doesn't matter how I feel, I'm only your daughter. She's going on Thursday, I promise. Doesn't worry me. She can stay forever as far as I'm... Oh. Kathy, I thought you were still lying down.
<laughs> oh, Sandra didn't mean it. She was just angry with me because I lost my temper with her. She likes you. I know she does. Look, I know she's very sorry about the whole business, and I'm sure she'll try to make it up to you. You don't want me here? Oh, don't be so silly. Of course we want you. And don't you go thinking your mother doesn't care about you either, because she does. I saw her this morning. She told me she's leaving, Harry. When? Today, she was packing her things. It's true. And when all this is over, she wants you to go and live with her. Honest? Honest. And don't you go worrying about Harry. I'm sure the police are holding on to him. Sorry if I'd have known. Did you take anything with her? No, no, I don't think so. Would you have gone to a boyfriend's place? She's not there, I phoned. How long ago? Soon after I rang you. All right, come on, soon. Oh, just a minute. It's possible she could have gone to Harry's place. Well, why? Well, you arrested him, didn't you? No, we had nothing to hold him on. Oh, but I told her... Oh, God, I... I think she might have gone there to see her mother. Her mother won't be there. Yes, ma'am, can I help you? Oh, you must be Senior Sergeant McLeod. I'm Sergeant Joan Palmer. Ah, Joan. Hi, Frank. How are you? Keith, I don't believe you've met Joan Palmer. No, I haven't. Uh, Senior Sergeant Vickers, Senior Detective Peters. How do you do? Uh, you weren't told I was a woman, obviously. No, I wasn't. They merely said... Uh, one of Russell Street's little jokes. I am used to it. I guess you are. Well, as you're also very busy, perhaps somebody would show me where to go. Mm, oh, yeah, yeah, I'll show you the way. Russell Street can't do this. I have, Sarge. I have. Breaking for lunch? Oh, hi, Frank. Oh, uh, I brought some with me. It would stretch to two. You've won me. Never could resist your cookie. Oh, it's only sandwiches. Oh, well, see if I can get some coffee. OK. Roger, what's the chances of uh, coffee for two thirsty detectives? Black or white? Black. Thanks, mate. Black. Yeah. Where are the others? Uh, they're eating later. You were quite a shock to the system. I gather I'm the first woman detective you've ever had here. That's right. Well, there's quite a lot of us around now. Yeah, not before time. <laughs> Your share. Thanks. Didn't you leave the force? When Paul went to Pentridge. Oh, I took six months off and I thought about it. I don't know anything else. It's a pretty good policeman. Why? Who knows? I never did. Do you see? We're divorced, Frank. Two to one, they're out of coffee. <laughs> Banner? Yes, Keith? Fine. Man's just come in and reported his wife missing. Detective Sergeant Vickers thinks you should be in on it. Oh, I don't believe it. I'll give him time. He'll have you working like a slave. You recognize it? It's Jennifer's. I gave it to her. Something happened? We don't know. The lighter was found under the Ferny Street Bridge. Well, she often goes walking there. She could have dropped it any time. Uh, your wife left home at about 7.30 yesterday morning. Why'd you take so long to report it? Well, we had an argument. Nothing serious, just a tiff. I thought she'd gone to spend the night with her mother. You didn't bother to check? Oh, it's the Sergeant Palmer. Here on special assignment regarding missing females. Well? She walked out. And when did you decide she was missing? My mother-in-law came round to the house this morning. She told me Jennifer hadn't spent the night with her. Perhaps she'd stay with a friend. Well, I've rung everybody I can think of. Where's your mother-in-law now? She's uh, back at the house. She stayed there in case Jennifer showed up. Oh, I'll we'll have to talk to her. She may know some friends that you haven't thought of. Yeah, that's possible. You going home now? No, I thought I'd go back to the office. Well, Jennifer would expect me to be there. She might ring. Your wife is missing, but she'd expect you to be at the office? Yes. Or did she threaten to leave you? No, no, it was nothing like that. If you leave your office address and phone number with Sergeant McLeod, we'll be in touch. A bit rough on him? Oh, it's obvious. His wife's left him. Except you don't know the full details, Sergeant Palmer. A woman answering her description was seen in the park yesterday morning. She'd been bashed. Frank, 
Take Mick and check with the mother-in-law. There may be more to that argument than he's saying. I'll come with you. You'll stay here, Sergeant Palmer. Oh, but I thought You're I... You're staying. Is that clear? Yes. Now, Sergeant Palmer, we may as well get a few things straight. This is my station, and things that are on the way, I say. Vickers. Oh, I see. No, 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 that'll be right. Uh, send him up to the muster room. One of our local councillors has asked to see the special detective. That's you. Uh, Sergeant Vickers, I... I feel I should apologise. I guess I'm just used to doing things my own way. Accepted. He's waiting for you in the master room. Thank you for coming in, Mrs. Morris. I will be in touch. How many has that you've interviewed? Oh, five. It's a parents I feel really sorry for. Doing any good? Well, these aren't the usual teenagers disgruntled with home. These girls are all in their 20s. They've got good jobs. That girl was about to get married. Decided we haven't been lazing on the job, after all? Well, the cases are still unsolved. This is very serious, Miss Palmer. If my information isn't acted upon promptly, the man concerned could get away. Mr. Morris, I have been very patient with you. If you have any information that could help us in our inquiries, it's your duty to tell us. I'm doing it for your own good. Let me be the judge of that. The girl who was attacked last night, did she describe the man at all? Why do you want to know? Answer my question. We ask the questions here, Mr. Morris. We don't answer them. Oh, Sergeant Vickers, sir. I just don't want to make a mistake. I don't want to involve a possibly innocent man. Take a seat. Now, just whom do you suspect and of what? Last night's attack. Has it been released to the public? I'm asking the questions. Well, old Claude knew about it. He stopped me this morning to tell me. Yeah? Well, how did he know about it? I wondered if he could be the attacker he was missing all day yesterday. He reported the first one. Well, I thought of that. That could easily have been a cover-up. Do you really think it could have been Claude? Miss Palmer, how could I possibly know you wouldn't tell me if you had a description? We'll talk to Claude, Mr. Morrison. Thank you for coming in. I thought of my duty. You did the right thing. Good day. Well, I don't know whether he hates women, but he certainly doesn't like you. It's mutual. I wonder how the old man did know. Uh, it wouldn't be the first time I'll Claude and his cronies know more about what's going on at Jarrah Central than we do. Well, I'll let you know when the parents will be visiting. <laughs> yes, thank you. I wish they were all that simple. Goodbye. We picked up for shoplifting two weeks ago. No fixed place for abode, using a false name two months to go. Well, how'd you get out of it? Oh, well, I keep a current file on all the girls and fairly, and... She was sentenced about the time this girl went missing and the descriptions matched. I'm impressed. Well, I suppose you better inform the parents. They'll be a bit shocked, I think, but at least they know where she is. Do you get any others that match? Oh, I wish they were all that simple. At least she uh, fitted the runaway pattern, not like all those others. Oh, come on, Mr. Farrell. What can we do for you? I heard on the radio that a woman was attacked last night. Council is a fast worker. That's correct. Was it the same man? We think so. Well, I suppose I should be glad. At least now you don't think I heard Jennifer. You haven't heard from her? No. Well, we're still looking for her, Mr. Farrell. Could I talk to you? I'll be in my office. Take a seat. I've been uh, thinking about what you said yesterday. Jennifer might have left me. Well, why doesn't she at least let her mother know where she is? Would her mother tell you? Well, yes. She knows how worried I am. Maybe that's why. This woman last night was taken to hospital. Have no, you checked? No, she hasn't been to a hospital. We checked with your doctor. She hasn't been there. It's all my fault, isn't it? Feeling sorry for yourself, aren't you? Well, don't. Go and see all her friends. If she attended church, go there. And when you finish, then start all over again. Well, but you look, want to I... find her, don't you? Yes, of course. Well? Oh, Sergeant, how long has Councillor Morris lived in the area? Well, did you know he used to live at Frankston and his wife was reported missing at Frankston CI a year ago? Okay. Shall we? Well, I'm uh, working on my next assignment, Frankston, looking through some files and discovered that. Funny he hasn't mentioned it. But I think we should pay him a visit. A councillor could know about the layout of storm drains, couldn't he? Yes. Tell you about on the way. Oh, he's out the back doing some gardening. I'll get him. We'd like to talk to you first. Right. It's about your mother. Oh. 
Do you know where she is? No. You reported her missing to Frankston Police Station a year ago. Oh, that was a mistake. My mother left us. She went off with another man. Now, why didn't you notify Frankston Police? Dad got the letter. I thought he told them. Did you read the letter? I didn't want to. Uh, would you get your father? Well, she'll tell him why we're here. Probably. Well, he'll say he destroyed the letter. That's right, Sergeant Palmer. Give them our rope. It was very remiss of me not to notify Frankston. I still have the letter. So I remember now. What with the moving and everything, it just slipped my mind. It should be here, unless I threw it out when I did the bills last month. What's this? Private business. I think you should see that, Sergeant. No. Mr. Morris? It's nothing really, just some council business. Do you have any objections to us searching your house? No. You've no idea how many factories pour their effluent down the drains. It goes into the sea where our children swim. When I'm going to put a stop to that, I can tell you. What do you have these for? I asked the town clerk for a copy of the plan. I inspect different areas regularly. It's the only way to catch them. The woman attacked under the bridge, Mrs. Farrell. Her husband's very worried. Where is she? Oh, I put a stop to that, didn't I? I fixed it. They're going to put extra lighting in now. Where is your wife? There are all kinds of dirt, Sergeant Vickers. Sergeant Vickers? Yeah, Frank. Well, she'll be all right? Oh, good. All right, thanks, Frank. Mrs. Farrell's been found. She was in one of the drains. That would only have taken a few days to clear up. It only takes a week. Then I bury the rubbish in the old creek bed. What creek bed? Locky Creek. I buried quite a bit of rubbish there. Oh, it's not polluting the ground. There'll be tons of earth over it soon. The council's agreed to my recommendation into making it into a park. A beautiful spot where the citizens of Yarra Central can relax. Frank's at the Alfred Hospital. He'll know what to do. You're not seriously considering keeping her on the staff? It can be dangerous. Where's your wife, Mr. Morris? She left me, didn't I tell you? <laughs> she said I was impotent. But have you seen my beautiful daughter? She's living proof. I believed her for a while. But I'm all right now. She'll be all right. I, um, just wanted to say thank you. Look after her. I will. Well, goodbye, Mr. Farrell. I don't think we'll be seeing you again. Oh, that's for sure. Goodbye, Sergeant. Mr. Farrell. You'll realize how lucky he is when he reads tomorrow's papers. Mm. Oh, Cindy Morris just arrived. She found the letter from her mother. Alive and well, residing in Brisbane. The see, up there checked it out. Oh. They found another two. That makes six now. Ah, six files. You'll find it'll help you identify them. Women's intuition. I've been expecting you. We were here earlier. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I just wanted to be alone. You were home and didn't answer? No, no. I, I went out for a walk. How'd you find out? About Rupert's death. I telephoned his house first thing this morning. It was a terrible shock. Had you been friendly with him very long? Oh, a year. Mm, perhaps longer. How friendly? What do you mean? Intimately? I don't have to answer that. You were planning to go away with him. Tonight? No, I never really believed I'd go. He was uh, unreliable. Oh, what do you know about him? Well, you've just implied he wasn't to be trusted. Well, nothing is certain these days, is it? Did you know he was unfaithful? What do you mean? He was a philanderer. Oh, well, he had a reputation in the past. I knew what he was. Did you know he was planning to leave the country with another woman? Tonight? A younger woman? What are you trying to do to me? I just want to know if you know. We've just picked her up from the airport. No. No, I didn't know. The woman was Sandra, your daughter. Oh, the bitch! You little bitch! 
You can't leave things alone, can you? I'm sorry, Mother. I'm sorry. But Rupert was my last chance. And you, you interfering little... You're the whole cause of this damn mess. You realize that we would have been away from here last night if it hadn't been for you? Where? Where were you going? Hong Kong. Oh, I didn't know. I really didn't know. I'm sorry, Mother. Sorry. Oh, Rupert, that two-faced rotter. Of course, he'd never have taken you. I had the ticket. Yes, that's about all you had. Oh, come on. It was just the money and the trip, wasn't it? Well, when are you going to come out of your dream world? Well, there's no doubt about it, Sandra. When it comes to cheating, you're the tops. Well, you were going away without telling me. Oh, hark, who's talking? <sighs> and what about Steve? Your wonderful fisherman. Oh, not rich enough for you, I suppose. Steve is a bore. He's too possessive and rough. So you have to steal somebody else's life just to amuse yourself? Look, Mother, it was you who taught me every girl for herself. And if you're inferring that I'm a gold digger, well, then I learned it all from you. Get out! <laughs> You didn't tell us yesterday you knew about Morgan and your daughter. Well, how does a mother tell something like that to strangers? How long had it been going on? With Sandra? Oh, not long. No, I'm sure of that. Sandra falls in love three times a week. Oh, I just hoped she'd grow out of it and move on like she has with so many others. Did you tell her you'd seen them together, or him? Oh, why cause more bother? Have you argued with Sandra about it since? No. You're not planning to go anywhere, are you? <sighs> not now. Well, I'd like you to come down to the station, Mrs. Stacy. Is your daughter in? No, no, she went out a while ago. Well, if you'll just get dressed, we'll be on our way. Well, I hadn't seen Sandra for a week. Why didn't you confront her over Morgan? Well, I told him I didn't want to cause any more bother. How did the mirror get broken? There's a vase broken, too, since we were there last. Mrs. Stacy? I, I threw it at my own reflection for being so damn stupid. Did you tell Morgan about what you'd seen? No. Why not? Well, we were going away together, starting a new life. It wouldn't have mattered then. Have a copy, Mrs. Stacy. Oh, thank you very much. Do you own a rifle, Mrs. Stacy? Of course not. Well, now, you know that, Mr. Grayley. Where did you think she'd gone? Sandra, I mean, when she didn't come home for a week. Oh, you don't know Sandra. Well, I had hoped she'd gone off with her latest boyfriend, a fisherman, Steve Minnelli. Who's Minnelli? Yeah, that was him this morning. He came to get his car keys back. So, Minnelli was Sandra's boyfriend. April! Look, what are you going to do about this Donovan? Well, Karen specifically said he indecently assaulted her. Well, what were her exact words? Well... She went into town about five to check out the freight details on a saddle she'd ordered from Melbourne. The exact words. Look, that's not important. This is the important thing. That Donovan's an animal, the lowest, and this will just show you. All right, go on. That's the only reason she went into town. The only reason. Apparently, she'd met Donovan again. Well, she'd got bitten by a snake a month or two back, and Donovan had treated her. So yesterday he said it's going to need further treatment. And that's when he assaulted her. You, you don't know that. He took advantage of an innocent girl, and you should be in there yeah, getting well, we'll it. We'll be talking to Donovan. Now, is uh, that what Karen said, Mrs. Simpson? Look, she was upset. She didn't know what she was saying. Mm, all right. We'll, uh, we'll get back to you. Yeah, well, I'll come with you. I'll point Donovan out to you. No, it won't be necessary. Just tell me where he is. The pub shacked up with Kathleen Kirby. God, what sort of a woman's that? The pub, you won't miss him. Just one more thing. Why didn't you report the assault last night? Well, I was, I was too upset. I wasn't thinking. Mad. Yes, Mrs. Simpson. Don't believe a word he says. He's mad. And he's lying. Karen didn't go for any walk. She ran away from him. Well, why would she do that? Well, because he abused her. Why? Well, she come home late. And I ticked her off for telling lies. George Donovan wouldn't do her. Where's Karen now? I don't know. But she'll be all right. She, she can look after herself. He knows she does tell lies. 
Why didn't you tell us this before? What, with him around? It's more than me life's worth talking here now. Darling? Were you watching? I told the sergeant you was mad. They're not going to believe a word you said. The past is going to catch up with you, darling. And it's your own stupid fault. You're going to stand there all day. Why don't you move Oh, out? stop mumbling. I can't hear you. Move into town where you belong. Mock me from a distance. See that? We're married. In the church, we both said, till death us do part. Well, these last five years haven't been heaven for me. But I've stuck them out. I've had two. Because God joined us together and only God's going to take us apart. And I reckon if he made you like he did, then he meant me to be like I am. Well, Laura, my dear. Well, come along, dear. You've too far. Come on. May I present this Laura Tweedle Ramon? Laura, this is Mrs. Shepherd and Miss Shepherd. How do you do? You see to lunch, Maisie. Shh. Dear, it's nearly one. I do hope we'll not have to waken him. Maisie! He can't find something. Ah, and so this is a young lady from the Halls of Learning. Poor Maisie. Dear knows all Robbie and I can do is consistently bring her forgetfulness to her notice. If I offered to help, it would only encourage her faults. Really, Robbie has the patience for an angel. Now, what would you like to do today? Oh, I don't really mind. Oh, good then. If you won't mind staying in, I do so want to copy Robbie's sermon for tomorrow. He can't read his own handwriting. Oh, do make yourself quite at home, won't you? We have a little supper. Let's see.
He has a work in men's class at seven. Just has to save his boy. Oh, uh, you know my wife? Mr. Fuller. Yes, Mrs. Maynard. How do you do? Got time for a drink? Uh, no, not this time, thanks. Well, I'll see you out then. Yeah. You That'll be in Saturdays, will it? Uh, yeah, it should be. Good, I'll look forward to seeing that. Good interview. Oh, Fuller was doing some digging for dirt, but he has a reputation for being fair. Now, how about that drink? No, not for me, thanks, darling. Too early for me, thank you. Ah, looks like I'm beaten at the polls. Well, I'm not drinking by myself. <laughs> I'm just going down to the post office. I'll be gone about an hour. Is there anything you'd like? No. no. How does she keep up with it all? I don't know, love. But she's the only secretary I've never had to check up on to make sure things are done. Oh, John, can we still manage lunch with Mother? Do I have a choice? Lunch with your mother is a royal command. <laughs> of course we can, love. I hadn't forgotten. No, I know you're terribly busy. Look, I'll just go by myself, if you like, and give your apologies. What? And miss out my weekly fight with a member of the upper class? <laughs> Never let it be said. Another scotch, Mrs. Maynard? No, thank you, dear. I'm all right now. Why don't you lie down for a while, love? You know, I think I will. I suddenly feel rather tired. Oh, look, I forgot all about Mother and our lunch. Well, I'll ring her and tell her the press interview lasted longer than expected, if that's all right. Oh, thank you, Barbara. It's very kind of you. Oh, there you are, love. Feeling better after your rest? No, I couldn't sleep, John. I'm worried about you. Now, there's absolutely nothing for you to be worried about. Oh, John, don't be ridiculous. Somebody tried to shoot you. And missed. They won't risk trying it again. You can't be sure of that. Look, John, why don't you withdraw from the union? Let somebody else do the fighting. Who? Barker? Daly? I've given my best to this job, Kath. I can't just throw it away and let men like them take over. Why don't you stay at your mother's till this is all over? It'll only be a few days. In a short time, I'll be re-elected president and the ratbag faction will be nowhere. I won't leave you, John. Think about it, just for a few days. No, I refuse to run away. You know, I'm a very lucky man. Oh, well, of course you are. What other man is served by two absolutely devoted women, for heaven's sake? Oh, and has lunch with a member of the upper classes once a week. <laughs> are these men all criminals? Criminals who resort to the use of firearms or men that write threatening or abusive letters. Living in the district, Miss Francis? In the Riverside area or known to frequent the area. Any possibility you would have seen any of them loitering in the area in the past couple of weeks? Well, it was a try. I'm sorry Mr Maynard isn't here to look at them. He's at a meeting with a group of shop stewards. Well, would you like a cup of tea, Miss Francis, or maybe something stronger? Oh, tea would be lovely. Thank you. I'll get it. Do sit down. You must be very concerned for your husband, Mrs Maynard. Yes, I am. I, I wish he'd give it all up. It's very demanding work. There's a lot of travel, a lot of paperwork in the evenings and interviews. Must keep you very busy. Oh, no, I do very little union work. Miss Sayers, that's Barbara, she, she handles most of the secretarial business with a little casual help from time to time. Do you travel with your husband when he goes? Oh, whenever I can, but that's not very often, I'm afraid, because I'm involved in a hospital auxiliary, you see, and that keeps me rather busy. Miss Francis, do you think there'll be another attempt on John's life? Not if we catch him. And we're doing everything we possibly can. Yes, I'm sure you are, but there's so much violence around these days. Ah, there you are, dear. Let me help you. The middle of the speech is a bit mangled, but I'll straighten it out later. See what you think of it. Oh, it's no use. I'll need my glasses. No, no, I'll go. You won't know where to find them. Bring us a glass of milk, will you, Kath? Your milk. Kath was in the bedroom. I was in the kitchen, so I...
Mrs. Maynard, you're about to tell us why Miss Sayers took the milk out to your husband. Well, I didn't know he wanted anything. I, I didn't hear him call out. Um, I found my glasses in the bedroom, and then I heard a bang, and I... <laughs> take it easy, take it easy. Are you sure you didn't see anybody on the golf course? Yes, quite sure. But you must have looked up after the shot was fired. Yeah, but I didn't see anyone there. The ground falls away pretty quickly behind that sand trap. Glenny could have crawled away without being seen. Fair distance away, Glenn. What, 200 metres? No, at least that. With a Lee Enfield, it'd have to be a pretty good shot. But not good enough to hit his target. How close were you to Miss Sayers again? Oh, about four or five feet, I suppose. Yeah. Do either of you know where she was before she went out onto the patio? Well, I didn't see her on my way to the bedroom, but I assume she was in the library too. I had heard her typing earlier. OK, thank you very much for your cooperation. There'll be a man posted here until whoever's responsible for this has been caught. Mr. Maynard, do you know of anyone by the name of Lou or Lewis? Lewis who? Oh, we don't have a name yet. Well, the union must have quite a few men by that name. Have you ever had a run-in with any of them? Not that I can recall. Well, why don't you check your records of members? Might jog your memory. Yeah, I'll do that. You're right. Poor Barbara. Why do these things happen? Sergeant Taylor, where's my husband? He's still down at the station. He's making out a statement. Well, what for? Uh, Mrs. Mannard, would you like to sit down, please? Why, Sergeant? Our inquiries have revealed that your husband was not the target of these shootings. Oh, then, then who was? I'm afraid you were. No, that, that's ridiculous. I... I... Oh, who would want to shoot me? I, I just don't think an enemy of John's would go that far. It wasn't an enemy of your husband's, Mrs. Maynard. It was your husband himself. Mrs. Maynard. I... No, I... I, I don't believe that. Did John say that? Yes, he did. Oh. Are you all right? Can I get you something? No, I... I... No, I'm, I'll, I'll be all right. I, I just need a couple of minutes to let it sink in. Did he say why? No. No, well, it isn't hard to guess, is it? I always knew I'd never hang on to him. A lot of people might say it was the other way around. Yes, I know, a lot of people did. They said that John married me for my money, but they didn't understand him. You know, it wasn't really the money, it was just the challenge of marrying the richest girl he knew. And, and now I... I suppose it was Barbara that he really wanted. Oh, we believe so, yeah. Yes, well, she was younger, of course, and very pretty. I think that was a challenge too, you know, not the richest girl this time, but the cleverest. I should have known he couldn't resist her. What'll happen to him? That's up to the courts, of course, but uh, it could be a life sentence. He'll hate it in jail. You know, he used to say he could never make up his mind about capital punishment. He thought that some people would rather hang than spend many years locked up. Well, he may not have been referring to himself. I hope not, Sergeant. With all my heart, I do. Well, what are you doing here? Well, perhaps you'd like to answer that. Well, how did you know where I live? Does that matter? This is where you live, isn't it? In an attic. Mum, what do you want? What is this place, Angela? It's my home, Mum. And would you mind keeping your voice down, please? There's a meeting going on downstairs. What kind of a meeting? doesn't concern you. No, I'm sorry. You're perfectly right. You're 19 years old. You don't need a mother. I just brought round a few of your things, that's all. Thank you. I should have just left them outside the door. I think it would have been better not to have seen you. Mum, please don't start. Oh, I see. Well, I suppose it's been coming to this for quite a while. Mum! You locked me out of the house at 4 a.m., remember? And 4, was it? Mm, that's a fine time to come home, isn't it? 
Well, what else have you been up to with your new friends? Oh, I'm looking for you at the salon. Mr. Plaché said you'd gone off with some lady. A new job, have you? Yes. Well, this is so top secret you can't tell me about it. You have to lock me here in the attic while there's a meeting going on downstairs in the middle of the night. Oh, tell me about your new job, Angela. Does it pay well? Well enough. Well enough. But you can't tell anyone. I'm learning about advertising from the guy who lives downstairs. Well, so there are young men living here as well as young ladies. Oh, for heaven's sake! No, I'm sorry. I shouldn't have asked. I'd rather not know. Oh, Angela. My little angel. I'm not your little angel, Mum. I never have been your little angel. Becky, perhaps, but not Angela. How can you say that? For as long as I can remember, it's been nothing but Becky, Becky, Becky. The only time you ever spoke to your little angel was to tell her how awkward she was, what a disappointment she'd been. I was believing it. And what about poor Daryl? What about poor Daryl? Oh, well, he comes over a lot, you know. Mopes around, tells me his troubles. <laughs> I think I'm more of a mother to him than I am to you. He frightens me. What's that? I said he frightens me. He murders guppies. Guppies? Well, I'm sorry, Angela. I do regard myself as a pretty fair judge of character. I can at least understand his behavior, but as for yours. Mum, poor Daryl has been following me. He's been getting in here. Because Becky, dear little sister Becky, told him I dumped him for a lesbian. Well, I don't see any point in this. I heard Daryl's version of why you dumped him, and I heard Becky's. I think I know where the truth lies. Is that funny? Believe me, Mum, that's hysterical. Don't you ever speak to me in that tone of voice again, you hear me? Do you? Sorry, she's just leaving. Give it five minutes, OK? What's up? What oh, five minutes? Nothing. What's going on down there? Mum, what do you want? Your sister was involved in an accident. What? The doctor said she was very lucky. She'll have her leg in plaster for a while, that's all, but it, it'll be a financial strain, and I thought... As you've got this wonderful new job, I thought perhaps I could depend on you to pay back a little money. That's all. Pay back? No, no. Doesn't matter. Becky and I don't need that sort of money. What do you mean, that sort? What exactly do you do? Well, I told you, I, I'm learning advertising. Mm -hmm. From the boy downstairs. Yes. Mm -hmm. Who conducts meetings at 11.30 p.m. Yes. Mm -hmm. And who pays you a little. Oh, well enough. Wasn't that what you said? Enough to live in somebody's attic, right? What are you getting? No, no, just let me get my facts straight. I wouldn't want to misrepresent my little angel like Becky and Daryl have obviously done. Mum, what are you talking about? I am talking about the $900 in that drawer. You went through my dresser. Well, I, I was looking for a pencil and paper, that's all. After three hours of waiting for you to come back from God knows where, I thought I'd leave you a note. That's a lie! You could have left a message downstairs. What else have you been lying about? Becky's accident? Would you ring Northern General Hospital and ask about that girl lying on her back in casualty ward? Then we'll see who the liar is. How dare you? How long did you have to lie on your back to earn more money than I get in three months? Right. Well, I'll show you then. Since we're being so honest with each other. That's what the little angel had to do. There, that's Angela, Mum. Ugly, awkward, stupid Angela. Well, I'm sure I did the right thing. I think there is some justice in life. I could almost laugh when it's all been made possible by you, or should I say that? I remember my angel. When things start to go sour, don't darken my doorway, ever. <laughs>
we are not late. That traffic was terrible this no, morning. No, don't worry. As usual, your sense of timing is perfect. <laughs> well, Mrs. Feinberg, welcome to my house. I hope I'm welcome too. Mrs. Joseph Goldman, Mrs. Maya Davis. Oh, Maya Davis's wife. Now, let me see. You, uh, you worked for the MDA committee? Oh, indeed mm. she did. It is a great pleasure to be in the home of a cousin of Rabbi David Jacobi. Oh, you saw him when you were in Israel. He lectures in Hebrew oh. to my son at Tel Aviv University. Mrs. Feinberg, thank you for bringing me this new friend. Oh, Reba has been wanting to meet you for a long time now. Reba? But I called my daughter Reba. <laughs> this one calls her Marilyn. What sort of a name is that? Mar Marilyn Davis? She would go to Mount Scopus, of no, course. No, uh, the boys go to Mount Scopus, but as the Church of England school was closer to home... Oh, C.R.E. I wanted her to go to Mount Scopus, but Maya said, after all, we are not raising her to be a rabbi. Uh, she would be the same coloring as you. Oh, she is not a bit like Reba. Blue eyes and hair like V. Oh, she takes after her father. So, oh, sit down, Mrs. Feinberg. Do sit down. Uh, do you ladies know each other? Good morning. Good morning. Uh, tell me, uh, has Mrs. Feinberg ever spoken about my grandson to you? Oh, such a bar mitzvah I had three years ago. People are still talking about it, yes? So, he would be 16 now. 16 and a good Jewish boy, even though his name is Michael Fielding. Oh, Peter. Hi, Grant. Oh, you still have that dreadful job, I suppose, in Fitzroy or oh, wherever it is. Oh, it's a lot more exciting than Queen Street. Here. It'll help you get over the oh, jet lag. Champagne, I don't think I can. But you will. <laughs> more than 30 hours, you know nothing but food and drink. You feel they are fattening you for market. Oh, that is to keep you quiet, Gren. Stop you from running amok in the plane. Oh, yeah. I was too exhausted to move, let alone run amok. <laughs> did anyone try to hijack you? They did not. Thank God. Well, I expected it, you know, every moment I expected it. That man across the aisle from us, you know, he kept looking around him, checking his watch. Ever. He was a retired bank manager from Bensdale. Well, what difference does that make? Now, tell me, where is everyone? Isn't this enough? Well, we expected a family gathering. You know, as I said to Joseph on the plane, it'd be wonderful to see all the family together. Well, here we are. No Ron? Well, no Ruth? No Michael? She'll be along later. And uh, Michael's staying down in the country. Uh, Ron should be back soon. He had some urgent call, but it won't take him very long. Oh, Peter, will you and Morris start the barbecue for me, please? Ruth had better get here soon. Otherwise, she's going to be cut out the well. <laughs> I think Mike's done his dash already. <laughs> he rides a motorbike? Yes, he bought it. That's why Dad's so annoyed. Suze, that's enough, darling. Go and get some lemonade. No, thanks. Oh, let the child finish. Maybe Sam should have strangled Susie at birth. He's living at Western Port Bay and mm. riding a rock opera. Isn't it exciting? I hope it's as good as Dave's Christ Superstar. Well, I bet it is because the lady is helping Suzanne, him. Suzanne, will you go and help Nana, please? You promised. I will. She's very talented, dear. Well, come along, darling. We've got to finish the salt. But why shouldn't I tell Grant? Now, Joseph, such a lot has happened since we've been away. Do you think we will ever catch up? Now, Michael, it seems, has a girlfriend. She's very nice, Mama. She's Jewish. And what else would she be? Oh! Hello, Grandad. Gran, sorry we're late. You remember Gary, don't you? But you liked it, the country. How can a Jew not like Israel? You know, your father's right. It was splendid to go there and just to, to be there. But to stay, that takes courage. I remember talking to the Shemmers. They lost two sons in 73. And I said to them that I am very glad that we live in Australia. I know I'm a coward, but... Oh, well, my own grandson cannot come to see us, but Sam, how lovely. Eva? It's, uh, it's silly, isn't it? crying now. Oh, it's the best time when the news is good. Well, there certainly hasn't been much of that this year. Mm, well, some years are like that, aren't they? I could see before we went away how it would go. So you, uh, you weren't surprised at the best things are written? Well, it was there in all their letters. The less they tell you sometimes, the more you know. If only there was something we could do. 
No, there's nothing. They're all grown up now, Mrs. Fielding. Not even I can plan their lives for them now, although I'm sure they expect me to try. <laughs> oh, Reba and Anne have thought Mama will come home and she will be amazed, appalled, or oh, she'll rant and rave. <laughs> no, I'm getting too old for that now. And anyway, what would be the point? They imagine I think the family is falling apart and... Well, yes, that is true. You have thought that too. But these things happen. All we can do now is sit back and hope they come to their senses. And say a little prayer, too, perhaps. I shall have my say, of course. I wouldn't want to disappoint them all. Stand on the line, please. Good heavens. This can't be happening to me. Ladies, this is Evelyn Randall. This is B. Smith. B will show you around. You can get your dinner over there. Oh, no, I, I'm not really very hungry, thank you. You said about the food already. <laughs> well, suit yourself, but it's a long time till breakfast. Take a seat, Evie. Evelyn. OK, Evie. This is Lizzie, Doreen, Sandy and Judy. Hi. Hi. G'day. You're going to get full on arches if you stand there much longer, love. Come on, Evie. We're not going to bite you. It's always bad on the first day, but you get used to it. Used to it? After what I've just seen, you know, a young girl was, was viciously attacked in the back of the police van, right in front of me. Look, if you're not going to sit down, you can leave the dining room. Do you mean you come in with some others? Yes, two young girls. Uh, one was taken away by a nurse. I, I don't know what they did with a little maniac who attacked her. It was appalling. Three new faces. Oh, that's going to liven up the joint a bit. Yeah. See if you can do some snooping, Letty, just so we know what we're dealing with. Well, you better be careful. She's very violent. Yeah. Oh, I can look after myself. Anyway, Bee's got to know all about it because she's got to keep them in line. She runs this joint. How long did you get, Evelyn? Oh, I wouldn't pay any attention to her if I were you. She's a reporter. She asks a lot of questions don't concern her. Well, I am going to appeal. I, I won't be in here for very long. Evelyn Randall? Oh, yes. My name's Andrews. Sorry, I'm late. I had to get a few things out of the car. Sit down. Excuse me. Would you mind waiting outside? I see that you're married. Well, I've been a widow for 12 years. Any children? No, none. You're probably disorientated at the moment, but uh, three years is a long time to be idle. Perhaps you'd like to join some of the classes we have here. I have no intention of going back to school, young man. And my name's Andrews, Mr. Andrews. And I'm sure it does say somewhere in there that I intend to appeal against my conviction. Well, perhaps it'd be wise if you only appeal against the severity of your sentence. I shouldn't have been convicted at all. A doctor in my position wouldn't even have been charged. But the point is, Mrs. Randall, that you're not a registered doctor, nor are you acknowledged by the medical profession. The laws are here to protect the public from, well, shall we say, dangerous practices. My reputation as a herbalist is above reproach, and yours is a sort of attitude that sent me to this place. You shouldn't let that young teacher upset you. Doesn't know what he's talking about. He's read a few books, thinks he's an authority on everything. Doesn't know very much about women, that's for sure. Do you really think you can make people OK, you know, just by using plants and stuff? Well, there's hardly a plant around that can't be used for some sort of medicine. Not very much in this garden. Oh, you'll be surprised. You know, I could cure a lot of complaints just by using the stuff we've got here. Do you reckon you could fix me up something? What's wrong with you? I feel crook, that's all. Oh, my stomach's turning upside down, inside out, you know? Well, castor oil seeds should do it. Yes, all comfrey, that soothes the stomach very nicely. If I should give you some medicine, you must promise not to tell a soul, especially your friend, B. OK. Oh, Mrs. Morris almost caught me. Now, there's your torch. And this is what you wanted. Oh, yuck. Well, if you don't want to feel better, then don't drink it. Oh, no, it'll be OK. Thanks. I don't understand. It. How sick is she? Now, did you take this mixture just as I told you? You can't have it. What was in it? 
Oh, just uh, castor oil beans. They're quite harmless as long as they're taken as directed. Now, where's the rest of it? In the jug. Oh, what's it doing in there? Well, I warmed it up and tasted it better. You stupid little fool! Now, wait a minute. What difference does it make whether it was hot or cold? The beans become toxic when they're cooked. No what? wonder she's sick. I'm gonna die. Why didn't you follow my instructions? How was she supposed to know to do her harm if she cooked her? I told her what to do if she can't understand plain Listen, English. Listen, instead of bitching about this, what are we going to do here? Well, the chickweed's antidote are preparing an Oh, no, you won't. She's going to the infirmary. Get her down there, Judy. There she can get some proper treatment. Will she get proper treatment? Shut up! See if you can get her down there, love you, okay? Me, not me, love. Are you crazy? You're in here by killing someone with your jungle juice and you go and try it on Doreen. It is not jungle juice. And I did not kill that woman. It was her own fault she died. Well, tell that to the judge. But the woman was a fool. I was treating her for skin cancer. Oh, you got a cure for that too, have you? Look, I gave her specific instructions to apply the preparation to her skin. She thought it would do her better if she drank it. I am sorry she died. It was not my fault. Oh, well, as long as you're sorry, I suppose that's OK. Look, I'm in here for manslaughter. A doctor in my position wouldn't even have been charged. If anything happens to Doreen... Nothing will happen to her. I, I'm sure your orthodox medicine will fix her up. Well, you had better be right. And if I ever catch you performing any of your quackery in here again, Don't I'll... Don't you threaten me, Faith. If you weren't so bigoted, you'd realise I am a proper doctor, well, of sorts. But I don't deal in synthetic drugs. Herbs are a far more natural cure. Herbalist books? Yes, I have to keep up with my reading. It's entirely out of the question. Oh, it seems a perfectly reasonable request to me. I mean, other women are allowed books and magazines. It was because of your dabbling in herbalism that you were convicted. If I allowed you books, it would be tantamount to allowing a forger of pen, paper and, and signatures to practice. I don't put myself in the same category as a forger. I am not allowing you those books, and that is final. Mr Fletcher, would you return Randall to her duties? Well, I wonder if I might be allowed a few pot plants for myself. You mean herbs, don't you? I have already explained... Oh, no, 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 no. Uh, purely decorative plants. I've noticed the other women do have them. Very well. If they are purely decorative, you have my permission. Thank you, Mrs Davidson. Where's Fletch? Oh, got held up inside. He won't be long. Oh, good. Anything in this lot you want? <clears throat> You know, it all looks like rubbish to me. How can you tell one plant from the other? Well, practice, yes. I, I've been a herbalist for nearly 20 years. Oh. Ah. What's that? Comfrey. Yes, I thought there would be some here. Thank you, Judy. Oh, you're welcome. Here, uh, let me help you into this. Uh. Ah. Now, that is a find. Moldy bread. Randall. If you're that hungry, I'm sure oh, we... Oh, no, no, I, I don't intend to eat it, Mr Fletcher. No, the mould is a vital ingredient for my herbal remedies. The governor's warned you about meddling in that nonsense. Now throw that junk away and get it back into the building. Bryant, get about your business. If you ask me, all this nonsense is no better than witchcraft. Then it is quite obvious you know nothing about herbal remedies. If there are any good people would have been using them for years, and all the doctors around here would be out of business. Oh, quite. Yes, and I intend to prove that herbs are more effective than conventional medicine. Now, society may think that's rubbish. I will prove society wrong. Thanks to you all. You know, with the stuff Lizzie's collected and the bread moulds you've got, I think I might just be able to prove my case to the courts. OK, well, I know he's only a young bloke and that you could teach him a thing or two, but his cure's working on me. Well, it isn't working on Mrs Morris, is it? No. Well, it's just a matter of time. It won't work. No matter how much time you give it, I know. How do you know? Because I know it's not the right treatment. That's all. Look, I've seen this sort of thing when I was overseas. I know what'll cure her. I've got some stuff in my cell now. Well, the doc's not going to let you use your stuff on her. Bloody pity, though. She's the best screw in the whole place. I'm going to get the stuff now. Oh, you can't. They'll stop you. There's nobody here to stop me, is there? Going somewhere, Mrs. Randall? Yes, I, I want to go to the bathroom. There are bedpans in the ward. You can't keep me here. I'm not your patient. I'm not taking your medicine. I demand to be put back in my cell. 
I'm afraid that's not possible. You can't stop me. You've no right. Well, that's where you're wrong. In matters like this, I'm in complete charge. Well, I'm, I'm a sick woman. Your medicine isn't working. Now, Mrs. Morris could die. I can cure her and I can cure myself. Not while you're my patient. I am not your patient. If you die, I'll be held responsible. You're not taking anything that I haven't prescribed. You are a stupid, narrow-minded fool. You don't know what you're doing. You could kill us all before you admit you're wrong. I, I, I demand to see the governor. You're not seeing anybody. You're going back to bed. I am not. Well, just you remember, if Mrs. Morris dies, you killed her. Stupid fool. I told you he wouldn't let you do it. Oh, will you shut up, Lizzie? Next time Mrs. Randall leaves the room, would you call out Mrs. Birdsworth? Yes, Doctor. Not that it'll make much difference. From now on, there'll be someone on duty at all times in the examination room. I had to say I'd call out. I wouldn't really. Oh, that's all right. If that means he trusts you. You can get the stuff for me. Oh, no. Oh, come on. Oh, no. I've been in here for over 20 years for poisoning. I didn't even do it, and I'm not going to give anything to Mrs. Morris. Lizzie, you'll be saving her life. Yeah. Well, I suppose you know what you're doing. But you did do in one of your patients once before, didn't you? And if I gave some of that stuff to Mrs. Morris, and she died... God... Hardly the attitude for someone who calls herself a healer. I could heal her if you'd let me. No. Sister Haynes, if you hear one more mention of Mrs. Randall's miraculous cure, let me know. I'll have one of the solitary cells turned into a ward, and we'll send her up there. Well, have you finally decided to see it my way? Hardly. We've come to search a cell, Randall. Oh, really? What do you expect to find? You don't even know what the disease is, do you? Hmm? How can you cure it if you don't know what it is? What is this? Work it out for yourself. I'm not going to tell you. Well, I've known what the disease is and how to cure it almost for the beginning. Now, that's quite a kick in the pants for traditional medicine, isn't it? You might have the good manners to answer when somebody speaks to you. All right, Mrs. Randall. What is it you'd like me to say? I'd like you to admit you're in the wrong. If you're letting your pride stand in the way of curing patients who are sick, well, that doesn't say very much for the oath you take, does it? It's nothing to do with pride, just common sense and experience. I think you're just afraid to admit I'm in the right. You flatter yourself, Mrs. Randall. I'm not trying to win any support in here. It's the medical authorities I want to take notice, and before this is over, they'll be begging for my help. There's no doubt that this pollen caused the illness. Mm, yes, I thought it must be something like that. You know about this pollen, then? Oh, yes, yes. Any naturopath or herbalist would. It's the traditional poison of many of the Aboriginal tribes. But if you had some idea what had caused this illness, why did you not say so? Well, I mean, who would have taken any notice of me? And, and I couldn't be sure that it was that. After all, there aren't any pandanus palms around here, are there? No, that does present a problem. Mm. But someone administered the poison to the women, and you were the obvious choice. You're mistaken, Mrs. Davidson. I wouldn't do any such thing. Not even if it meant it proved your point, that you can cure. I know that you feel you have been unjustly imprisoned. I suggest that you created this disease in order to force the authorities to admit that you have the ability of a natural healer. You can't blame me for this. You have no proof. No, we haven't. Not as yet. But if we do find that proof, I assure you, you will be charged. And the charge will be administering a poisonous, noxious or destructive thing with intent to harm, discomfort or annoy. It carries a maximum penalty of two years. The matter will be thoroughly investigated, I can assure you. But I, I didn't do it. Then the matter need not concern you, need it? Is anyone there? Ah! Mr. Fletcher, oh, Mr. 
is the ledger. What is it now, Randall? There's someone in my cell. She tried to strangle me. Who did? Oh, I don't know the right was out, but she grabbed me by the throat. Let's have a look, shall we? I thought you said the lights were out. Well, they were. Well, if there was anyone here, they must have got away pretty quickly. Well, there was someone here, I tell you. She tried to strangle me. What do you think you're playing at, Randall? You think that you can get out of here by pretending to be victimised, eh? Well, it won't work. But you've got to get me out of here, Mrs Davidson. Those women will kill me. And how do you imagine I could get you out of here? Well, you, you could have me transferred to another prison, couldn't you? Yes, that is possible, but I would need a very good reason. Well, you've got a good reason. The women are threatening me. I have read Mr. Fletcher's report, and he sees no evidence of victimization. It's my opinion that you invented the whole thing. No, that's not true. Look, I am not prepared to have you transferred at the moment. I suggest that you remain quiet and do not continually draw attention to yourself. Then no one will bother you. Look, Mrs. Davidson, you've got to listen to me. Somebody tried to Come strangle... Come in. Where's it coming from? Can you tell? I think it's Randall. Oh, my God. What's going on out there? Oh, God. 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 Is she very badly burned? Bad enough. She should have been moved more quickly. Obviously, the women's way of getting back at her. 